Tell me why you guys are getting into VR when it's become such a crowded space now. Sure. Well, we've actually been working on VR for many years. Um, for the past couple of years, we've looked at VR. We've been extremely excited about what's happening with VR. But I think with, with what's been happening, um, we realize that while we're really close to a consumer version of VR for everyone, um, it's still really far away. A lot, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on the uh, positional tracking, on the head tracking, so on and so forth. So what we've done essentially is we've taken all the work we've done and we're making it completely open source. So OS VR in a single line, it's pretty much like Android for VR. So it's not ours anymore, so to speak, it's for everyone. What do you get out of this being open source? What does the hardware company get out of this? Sure, well, you know, for us, we're both a, a software platform company and a hardware company, but more importantly, we're probably the experts in terms of uh, human machine interfa uh, interface. You know, you're familiar with our mice and keyboards. Yep. Um, today, actually, the Razer Hydra is probably the de facto controller for all of VR, you know, whether it's Oculus, so on and so and forth. And just describe that real quick. That's a controller that mm -hmm. you use to manipulate what you're seeing. So it's an ultra precise controller. You know, you can, you can twist your, your wrist. It will tell you exactly motion for motion what's happening in the virtual world. So that's the Razer Hydra. But the biggest problem today is essentially how do you control things in uh, the virtual space? Right. So that's where our expertise comes in. We think we've cracked it. So a little later in the year, we'll actually have some pretty exciting announcements. But essentially, you should just the, talk about them now. I, maybe, maybe. Nobody not. is listening. <laughs> but, but that's I heard what maybe. We're doing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, put um, this on. You won't even know you're here. You'll just tell me. <laughs> so I want to ask you about the two billion dollar elephant in the room, which is Oculus. Mm -hmm. Why is this, a, is this a competitor to Oculus? Why would you want to create something when this market now seems so focused on that high-end technology? Sure, well, to be clear, this is not a competitor to Oculus. It's not a competitor to any HMDs out there. In fact, uh, today, um, as part of the OSVR, we've got quite a number of uh, HMDs, uh, traditional competitors, if you will, who've joined the OSVR because this, in essence, is a platform that will help any existing um, HMD out there. This will work with, for example, we've got plugins for Oculus. You know, it's gonna, whatever uh, does well for OSVR is gonna be great for the entire industry and for all the HMDs out there. It doesn't compete with anyone. VR is this techie thing. When I put this on, I look like a cyborg. I'm gonna put it back on. Oh, you look like a great cyborg. Though. I look like a great cyborg <laughs> that doesn't wanna engage with anyone around me. Actually, no, there's a huge skeleton flying by me. <laughs> um, what is the mainstream goal of VR? When, when does something like this become something that my mom will put on? Anything that you think really is going to be the killer application that even has gaming built in but is more consumer friendly? So I think gaming is probably the first, um, given the community, you know, tend to be more tech savvy, they adopt right. new technologies faster, so on and so forth. But, you know, there's lots of stuff. There are lots of um, companies trying to get into the space and making a, a big splash. Um, for example, concerts. You know, you could be part of a concert, you could be watching a concert, you could be part of the, the band on the stage. Right. Um, news. You know, instead of just taking a passive view to what's happening in the, in the news, you could be in the war zone. You could be seeing what's happening on the ground, literally, by looking around and, and seeing the actual um, visceral nature yeah. of what's uh, on, on the ground. But I think what OSVR brings is the opportunity of that future a lot closer. So instead of being ha having to wait 36, 48 months, this could bring it down to as close as six months. What about the fact that when I put this on, I feel a little nauseous? <laughs> and, and that's absolutely what we're trying to solve. So, so that um, I'm gonna area. put that back. I mean, let's see, if, can if I put this on? Sure. But uh, yeah, no, finish up on the, the nausea question. Right, so that's um, essentially, I think, what we're, we're really looking, to get the best um, possible solution. So we've got multiple head trackers involved, um, trying, to get, make, uh, trying to make sure that we get the best solution is what OSVR will do. Instead of trying to do this in an ivory tower, to say, I pick this as the best technology for head tracking, for example. Today, we're going to look at thousands, hundreds of, of solutions, all of them saying, pick me, pick me, because I've got the best solution. And maybe 95%. I will make you throw up, because I've got better head tracking and Absolutely. better software that... And, and in, with OSVR, they get the chance to get it out there to everyone. 